a lot of people actually misunderstood him. They thought that he was joking about it. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss what exactly happened in the GTC conference and where is the AI industry headed? There's a lot to discuss in this video, so let's get started. I am a helper guiding the blind through a crowded world. I am a transformer, harnessing gravity to store renewable power. I am a trainer, teaching robots to assist, to watch out for danger. I am a healer, these antibiotics don't contain penicillin, so it's perfectly safe for you to take them. I am AI. Brought to life by NVIDIA. Deep learning. And brilliant minds. Everywhere. Welcome to GTC. So we can divide this session into five different parts. In the first part, the speaker, Jason Huang, started by a little bit of history. So he mentioned how exactly did the accelerated computing revolutionized back in 2006. And he also mentioned the LXNet, which happened in 2012. Now, this is a very important point, And a lot of people actually misunderstood him. They thought that he was joking about it. But have a look at what he has to say. 2012, LXNet. You put a cat into this computer, and it comes out and it says, cat. And we said, oh my god. This is going to change everything. <laughs> you take one million numbers, you take one million numbers across three channels, RGB. These numbers make no sense to anybody. You put it into this software, and it compresses, it dimensionally reduces it. It reduces it from a million dimensions, a million dimensions. It turns it into three letters, one vector, one number. As you can see, it is a very impressive thing that you have millions of pixels in RGB format. These are just numbers. And when you feed it to an AI model, it just sums it up into three different characters and it gives you the output cat. And that is very impressive. But all of this was back in 2012. So now after all of this computing and after discussing all of the history, he came on to the second part, which was Blackwell platform. This is Blackwell. Now, what exactly is the Blackwell platform? This is basically a new architecture of the GPU. They don't really call it a chip, they call it a platform. Now, what exactly is new in this? If you compare it to the Hopper, which was the previous version, it is now able to handle much more. How much more exactly? So if you look at different big models of AI, you can see that they have these parameters uh, for example, 70B or 140B, which stands for billion. So you will basically have 170 billion parameters or weights, or if you have a smaller model like 3 billion, then you will have 3 billion parameters. So these models were in billions and the hopper can actually run these models. But now this new Blackwell platform can run AI models that are of trillions of parameters. So we have gone from billion with a B to trillion with a T. So it can handle much more computational power when it comes to AI models. If you look at this graph, you can see that in 2016, we actually had just 19 teraflops when now we have around 20,000 teraflops. If you compare this within eight years of span, it is a thousand X performance. So that is an amazing achievement. If you just look at two years back, which was Hopper, you can see it is only 4,000 T flops. As you can see, it is amazing how we have come so far in so little time span. The third section was related to deployment. So how can you deploy these models that are getting bigger and bigger? So to find an easy way, they have introduced something known as the NIM. And so we have a great idea. We're going to invent a new way, an, invent a new way for you to receive and operate software. This software comes basically 
in a digital box. We call it a container. And we call it the NVIDIA Inference Microservice, a NIM. NIM is basically NVIDIA Inference Microservices. You can imagine this as a container which contains the AI model as well as all the dependencies of that AI model as well. So this makes it very easy to deploy because it works as an API. So you create these NIMs and you can have multiple NIMs communicating with each other. In fact, you also have a digital NIM which is now a human digital version of a NIM known as Dian. So it is a health service care provider which can actually talk with you. It, can, it is animated as well. And at the back end, it's using a NIM to deploy this. In the fourth section, they discussed the Nemo and the NVIDIA AI Foundry. Now, the idea here is that once you have your model ready in a NIM, what can you do to actually deploy? The bigger picture is that you will have multiple AI models through which you will communicate between each other and create new AI inferences and new AI applications. Now, sometimes what happens is that you need some custom configuration. You need to train or fine tune your model to have specific answers. So in that case, you can use the Nemo that will enable companies to tailor and deploy AI models for their specific needs. Here, they also discuss the idea of a vector database, which is basically your embeddings that know the semantics of the actual input as well. So what companies can do, they can provide their information. For example, here you can see they are providing a PDF file and it can categorize it, it can understand it and store it in a vector database. And then the employees can access this vector database and then ask questions about it and create all sort of different applications that help that particular company solving their internal problems. And he gave a very funny example of a bug chatbot. So let's have a look at what he had to say. You know, they just chat with the bugs database. You know, uh, how many bugs was there last night? Um, are we making any progress? And then after you're done talking to this uh, bugs database, you need therapy. And, and so, so we, we have another chatbot for you. You can do it. In the final part, they discussed about robotics and how robotics can now be given perception. So the idea is that instead of having fixed values, for example, going from A to B, what you will do is you will tell the robot that go from point A to B and it will try to find the solution by itself instead of giving a predefined way of going fixed location from A to B. So what it does is that it will perceive its environment. It will try to come up with a solution like a human will. They showed a few demos of the Omniverse simulator in which they had these factories running with robots. There were humans interacting with robots as well. And what they did was they took this part and embedded it into an actual robot. And that project is known as the NVIDIA Project Groot. This is NVIDIA Project Groot. A general purpose foundation model for humanoid robot learning. The group model takes multimodal instructions and past interactions as input and produces the next action for the robot to execute. We developed Isaac Lab, a robot learning application to train Groot on Omniverse Isaac Sim. And we scale out with Osmo, a new compute orchestration service that coordinates workflows across DGX systems for training and OVX systems for simulation. With these tools, we can train Groot in physically-based simulation and transfer zero shot to the real world. The Groot model will enable a robot to learn from a handful of human demonstrations so it can help with everyday tasks and emulate human movement just by observing us. This is made possible with NVIDIA's technologies that can understand humans from videos, train models in simulation, and ultimately deploy them directly to physical robots. Connecting Groot to a large language model even allows it to generate motions by following natural language instructions. Hi, GL1. Can you give me a high five? Sure thing. Let's high five. Can you give us some cool moves? Dirt, check this out. All this incredible intelligence is powered by the new Jetson Thor robotics chips. Designed for Groot, built for the future. With Isaac Lab, Osmo, and Groot, we're providing the building blocks for the next generation of AI-powered robotics. 
So what they did is they took these Jetson chips and embedded the software in it so that these AI models can perceive the environment and based on that they can provide actions to the humanoid robot and it can observe and then get the feedback again from the AI model. So it can replicate human behavior, it can perceive the environment, and it can perform actions on a real robot. And in fact, they had a live demo of this as well, and they gave an on-stage demo where two robots were moving around and Jensen was actually communicating with them and uh, he had a little bit of a funny interaction as well. So it was quite fun to see how all of that uh, worked out. <laughs> Hey guys! I'll give, I'll give you a snack in a moment. Let me finish up real quick. So there's a lot of exciting news as you can see. We can see some real robotics, some excellent simulations, some deployment new methods, and even training methods that will be simplified later on so you don't even have to code. You can basically pick and place two different AI models and create a completely new AI that will help solve your problems. Now they are also introducing the Blackwell platform that will allow you to have a trillions of parameters of AI models running on it. Very exciting news. And now we have even up to 20,000 teraflops. So all of this is very exciting and we can see the AI revolution is headed in the right direction and we can see a lot of big companies are backing it up and creating some amazing demos and some amazing applications so that we can take advantage of this. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and make sure to attend these live sessions. This will be still work going on for the next two, three days. So make sure to go ahead and attend the GTC conferences. You will learn a lot from these and I will be joining there as well uh, in the definitely in the AI sessions. And there are some generative AI especially that I will be attending. So make sure you attend and you will get a chance to win a 4090 graphics card if you register through the link below. So this is it for today's video and I will see you in the next one.